Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a look at etomidate. Many of these videos in the pharmacology section will focus on a single drug used in the practice of anesthesia, its mechanism of action, major side effects, think about them to take away and into consideration, and how why they're used, and some high yield details and clever ways to remember things about them. Think of this screen when it's done as your etomidate cheat sheet. So first, the type of drug. Etomidate is a, and I might mess this up, a carboxylated imidazole. Imidazole. And this really probably won't come up too much, but just for your own edification to know what type of drug this is. Now importantly, it has two isomers. And hopefully some of us remember from chemistry that isomers are two molecules that have the same chemical composition, but they are arranged differently. For an etomidate, the form we use is the D form, or the dextroroto form, and it acts as a hypnotic, or puts our patients to sleep. Our mechanism of action, like most of our hypnotics, is via GABA receptor allosteric modulation. The etomidate molecule binds weakly to closed ion channels, but it binds very tightly to open ion channels, and as a result, stabilizes the open form of the chloride channel of the GABA receptor. This is how it exerts its hypnotic effects. Again, like propofol, it will effectively make the patient blackout drunk pretty much immediately. And this is secondary to the increase in influx of chloride channels, uh, chloride molecules across the channel once activated by GABA. So the drug is dosed at about 0.2 to 0.3 milligrams per kilogram, which is the same thing as saying 20 to 30 percent of a patient's body weight. So to make it simple, a 100 kilo individual, for example, would get 20 to 30 milligrams for induction. Like propofol, the drug lasts for about three to eight minutes. So it's quick onset, quick offset. Now, fun fact, according to Miller's, every 0.1 milligram per kilogram produces about a 100 seconds of unconsciousness. This makes a linear relationship between the dose and the time of sedation. It's pretty neat. So, atomidate is primarily metabolized via ester hydrolysis. And this occurs in the blood. And it's then excreted in the urine. But again, just like propofol and many other drugs, the major cessation of the effect of hypnosis, or when the drug really stops working, is a result of the redistribution out to peripheral tissues. And that's a function of the three compartment model that we'll get into in a separate video. But just know that basically the drug stops working because it leaves the brain and goes to other places. Great, on to the systems. We're gonna start with the cardiovascular system first, and this is really where the money is with Atomidate. Atomidate is extremely hemodynamically stable, HD stable, meaning that patients don't really drop their pressure on induction like they do with propofol. Now, don't get me wrong, there is a small drop, but it's very minimal, even with heavier handed doses of the drug. Unlike propofol, which can act as a direct cardiac depressant, Atomidate does not have no inotropic effects. This is why you will commonly see Atomidate used for patients who are hypotensive, unstable, have major bleeding, etc. Or really in any patient where you may be afraid of major swings in their blood pressure, especially on induction like, say, cardiac patients where you don't want them to have major changes in their blood pressure or their heart rate. Next, onto the central nervous system, where Atomidate, unlike propofol, is a cerebral vasoconstrictor. 
And again, this is as opposed to propofol, which is a cerebral vasodilator. This then leads to a drop in cerebral blood flow, as well as a drop in ICP as a result. Now, as it pertains to the central nervous system, one of the big important things that may come up, especially on exams, as it pertains to automate, is that it can induce seizures, or at the very least, lower the threshold at which you experience them, versus lower threshold. And on top of that, it may even potentiate them. And on top of all of those things, the other thing that may come up as a big topic for exams is that it can cause myoclonic movements or myoclonic jerking of the patient. So for neuro, vasoconstriction in the brain, seizures, myoclonus. Awesome. On to the respiratory. Similarly to propofol and to barbiturates, etomidate may depress respirations. But in contrast to those other two, it's a lot less. As far as the respiratory effects go, it's a pretty unimpressive drug. And that's really kind of the big thing for the respiratory effects. Now we're going to head to miscellaneous here to talk about especially, I'm going to make a star here, the endocrine system. And again, this is going to be another big point that will come up on exams and discussions with attendings and colleagues. And this is because it can lead to adrenal suppression via disturbance of the enzyme 11 beta hydroxylase. And what that enzyme is important in doing is producing cortisol, one of our stress hormones, from steroids. That suppression may last up to eight hours after giving the drug, and that's per millers, up to eight hours. Now, a couple of other small miscellaneous facts. It may burn when it's pushed because of its relative insolubility in solutions. Uh, it does not produce analgesia, no analgesia. It is only a hypnotic. And then really the last big thing, and it will come up on exams at some point, is that it has an increased risk of nausea and vomiting. So do your best to avoid in patients who may be high risk for it. But really, at the end of the day, the major limiting factor, at least anecdotally, to most practitioners is using Atomidate because of the adrenal suppression kind of frightening people. So this is our introduction to Atomidate and our cheat sheet, if you will. Please feel free to print this out, cut it out, use it to take notes on. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Uh, subscribe below. Follow us on Instagram, account backwards from 10, and stay tuned for the next video.